implement a binary tree in Java. Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. In this video, we'll continue our introduction to data structures and we'll actually implement a binary tree in Java. So in the previous video, we learned what a tree was, some of its basic terms, some examples, and all the different kind of trees. In this video, we'll actually implement a binary tree in Java. This is the first step that will enable us to solve all kinds of fun interview questions and actually solve real world problems where trees are used. In our implementation, we'll keep it as reusable as possible so that we can use it for our future projects. So let's look at everything that we need to actually start implementing the tree. The first thing we'll need is Java Development Kit. Because we are doing everything in Java, we need the JDK. This will actually compile the Java code and help us run our programs. From my experience, I'd recommend using SDK man to actually install the JDKs and use OpenSDK as your JDK. The next piece is any IDE that you have. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It helps you with autocomplete, running the program and debugging. Again, in my experience, I would recommend using IntelliJ. You can use the Community Edition, which is free. Here's the link that you can use to download IntelliJ. I'll post all of these links in the description as well. Also, if you need any help with the setup, please feel free to post it in the comments. So I think setup is done. So let's start to build a tree. Actually, never mind. Let's plan it out first. Before we start any project, no matter how small it is, it doesn't hurt to plan things out. So in the future, when you start any project, just spend some time planning it out a little. And let's plan our tree before we start implementing it. So the first common question is, what kind of data can we store at our nodes? So we'll keep it simple and we'll just use an integer. In the previous video on trees, we learned that there are so many kinds of trees. In this video, we'll implement a binary tree. And the final piece of the plan is how will the tree look like? Let's target the tree that you see on your screens right now. It has seven nodes and shows the parent-child relationship. Okay, I think that sounds like a good plan. Let's jump into our ID and start building this tree. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so on IntelliJ, let's first create a new project. I'll give the name as basic binary tree. I'll have my project stored at this path here. We'll use Java, build system is IntelliJ, that's good. And the JDK is 11. Okay, this looks good, let's create it. And here's my project. Let me just increase the size of it a little. Okay, this looks good. So you can see we have nothing here right now. We just have a source folder which has nothing in there. Let's create a file in here. We can create a Java class and we can name it as basic binary tree, I guess. Okay, this looks good. I'm going to paste the ASCII representation of the tree that we just saw that we're trying to build. So we'll have seven nodes and this is how the tree will look like. This will be a good reference as we start to build a tree. So we see in our source, we created this one class. Now the next step will be to create a new package. Let's call it binary tree. In this binary tree, let's create two more classes. The first one will be the binary tree class. And the second one will be a node class. Now the node class here will represent each node of our tree. So we know this will have an integer value. Then it will have a left and a right child, which will all be of node type. So it will be node, let's name it left. And similarly, node and this will be right. Okay, now the next step will be to generate our constructor. For that you can right click here, hit generate, click on the constructor, and we want a constructor with only the value because by default we want our left and right to be null. So we'll hit okay and we got our constructor. Awesome. Now let's go back to the binary tree class. All you need in a binary tree is its root. So we can define the root as a node and that's it. Let's generate a constructor here as well. Perfect. Now this binary tree class can have more elements here. Like it can store how many levels this has, 
what's the height of the tree and all kinds of other util methods but for now i think this looks good so we have separated our tree into two parts one is binary tree which can be used to represent the whole tree and then we have a node which represent a single node of the tree now this is something that we can reuse across all of our programs in the future so let's jump back into the basic binary tree program that we had and let's use everything that we defined so we want this class to be our entry class and if you know java you know that we need a main method to do that so let's create the main method that's needed so that's public static void main and then you need string args this is the standard definition of how the main method looks like in java now just to make sure everything is working fine let's just print out something like hello world that would be classic let's use this play button here and run the program if it's compiling right now and we should see hello world in the output perfect so our program is actually looking good so now let's implement our tree in this program so as we know we have seven nodes here as you can see one to seven let's create seven different nodes here so you can define a node by doing final node one go to new node and if you remember our constructor takes the value of it so one will be the value and we can see node wasn't imported in but we can bring it in as an import using the power of ide and we can see it got imported on the top now let's create seven more nodes okay now we have seven nodes so now for each of these nodes let's define the left and right child relationships so node one has two child two and three we can do that by doing one dot the left child and we know that the left child is two so we can simply reference two here then one dot right has the right child as three perfect so node one is done now let's move on to node two. So two dot, it has a left child, which is four. So two is done. Then let's move on to three. Three has both left and right child. So we'll start with the left child first. Left will be five. Then three dot right will be six. Okay, moving on to five now. 5 dot it has a right child which is 7 and I think that's all we have three leaf nodes 4 7 and 6 which do not have any child now our nodes are defined well the next step is to actually define our binary tree so to do that we'll do by bin final binary tree Continue. now the constructor takes the root as the input in this case, we know that the root of the tree is one. Awesome. So we started by defining all the different nodes that we want in our tree. Then we defined the parent child relationship between each of these nodes. And then we created the binary tree with one as, as the root node. So this all looks good. And let's actually run this program and see what happens. We can see there's no output because we are not printing anything. I actually searched for some programs online so that we can visualize the binary tree and I've geared that for our use. Don't worry how it's implemented. We're just going to use it to demonstrate how the tree looks like. I'm just going to bring that in here. I'd like to create it inside another package. I'll call it utils and I'll paste the class that I have. So this is the source code that I just brought in. At this point, I'll say, don't worry about it. We're just using it to visualize a tree in this structure. It's something maybe that we can cover in a future video and I'll actually post this code in case if you're interested to see how this works, you're more than welcome to check it out. But at this point, I'll say don't worry about what I just imported in. So let's visualize the tree that we created. For that, I'll use this new util that I brought in. It's called binary tree view printer. And we'll print the node. And it takes the root of the binary tree. Okay, let's run this. Okay.
Okay, this tree looks exactly as we want it to look like. I think that's all we needed to implement our tree. And just to summarize, we created two classes to represent a tree. The first class was node. It had three fields, which is value, which is the value that we're storing at the node. Then we have left and the right nodes, which are the two children of this node. Then we created a binary tree class, which just holds the root node of the tree. And you can define other properties and util methods in the future. And then we use the node class that we define to create seven nodes, define the parent-child relationship, and then created a binary tree with one as the root of the tree, as we decided in our tree structure here. And after that, I just built a magical binary tree visualizer, which helped us visualize what we actually built. And this looks exactly what we planned for. Well, be proud of yourself. That was some awesome work that we did. It was a very simple tree, but that's the first step before we can start solving some complex problems. So that was great work. So now that we know how to build a tree, what else can we do? So at this point, the world of trees is actually open to us. We can do traversals, searching, printing all kinds of different views. We can start solving some interview questions. We can look at how you can serialize and deserialize tree and even solve some real world problems. Everything we did right now was binary trees. And once we get more comfortable with this concept, we'll extend our implementation to binary search trees and n array trees. And honestly, trees are very vast. So the possibilities are almost endless. You can build whatever you want with trees, almost everything. There are some other data structures as well that we'll study that are applicable to other applications. But for now, let's stick to trees. And guess what? We'll cover all of these topics in future videos. Well, that's all for this video. I think we made some good progress on trees. And now we are ready to do something more fun and challenging. If this video helped you, please don't forget to like and subscribe and to follow me on Twitter. Now that we know the basic of trees and how to actually build a tree, more videos will be coming out very soon. So don't forget to turn on those notifications. That's all I had for this video. Thank you everyone.